I would like to thank everybody for coming. I know this is not a convenient time. Uh, uh, your time is valuable, so I'm going to try to get started right away on time. Uh, I do have time after the presentation for questions and answers. I'd be happy to try to answer anything I can. Um, I have a couple goals. I would like to provide uh, you guys some uh, information on our uh, uh, facilities that we currently have, uh, kind of how we got to where we are today. Um, some of the growing pains that we're experiencing right now. A uh, big part of the presentation is to provide you guys options or provide the community options to get their input on what they would like and then to show you guys how to provide that uh, information through a survey. So these are the different things that we're going to cover tonight. Turn it on, folks. So first thing is is a little bit of a history, talk about the current facilities, some of the good things that are happening, the upgrades, the student growth that we're expecting, some of the needs that uh, we have identified, uh, what options financially we have as a district to pay for uh, some of these upgrades, uh, what are the actual options as far as building. Uh, the board has some action planned for tomorrow night, I'm going to talk to you about that. Uh, explain what our uh, survey is uh, and how that's going to be put out to uh, get uh, information, feedback from the community, and then questions and answers. So, a couple things, and I actually just walked out tonight. So this is the old school. Um, some of the folks that have been around a while, this was the school from 27 to 68. Uh, pretty much everybody knows the history of Tornado hit. Um, I don't know if you do know, but that I believe that sidewalk is still there. And so it actually goes directly into the secondary gym. So if you want to kind of get a, a reference, I'd wait till it's lighter. Uh, the art teacher and I talked a little bit about trying to recreate that opening, maybe at the end of that sidewalk. Uh, but this was, this is facing Belleville Street, which is the street out here. Uh, and again, as most of you know, the tornado hit in 68. Uh, information I received, it took about three years to get uh, the insurance worked out and referendum passed to uh, rebuild the school. This was damaged beyond repair. Uh, the area, let's see if this works. This area, that all the glass is actually the industrial arts classrooms right now in the north end. So that's part of the oldest part of the building. That's the art room is facing Bubble Street. On the other side, it looks very much like that. So that part of the building was rebuilt. The rest of it was torn down. I put this together. I thought it was kind of an interesting um, showing the different phases of the construction that we have currently in the school. Uh, the part that I just mentioned with the windows is in the orange in the upper left hand corner. I apologize if that's not actually orange, but closest I can get. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know exactly the time that was built. I know the gym was built in 51, there's a big plaque for it. Uh, and then there was a bunch of additions afterwards. The yellowish, orangish, uh, Big section in the middle that's all labeled C's. That was actually the addition that was put on after the tornado was torn down. So they put that addition on. At some point in time, they came back and they built the ramp that connect the north and the south end. The cafeteria, where we're at now, was built in 88. The purple or blue on the right-hand side was the 1996 edition. That's 14 classrooms. And what's not colored in white is the hallway and the office renovations along with the athletic fields that were done in 2001. And I know that's not the location of the Ag Center. Map's not big enough. But we did do the renovation of the Ag Center uh, this past summer. So when the school has needed to uh, adapt for changes, they've adapted. And we just, I used to do tours for freshman parents and it's kind of an addition after addition. That's kind of how the school is built. But it works for us. A lot of good things are happening here at Freeburg High School. Uh, this past year we were earned exemplary status. Uh, this is a, a very nice honor that we have. We received this from test scores and there's a bunch of different uh, items that you have to earn to get this. Uh, only 10% of the schools in the state earn this. Uh, and actually there's only three in about the seven uh, county areas uh, around us. Freeburg, Columbia, and Mascuda all had exemplary this is for high schools. 
Um, so last year, only one high school in this whole area had exemplary. So this was a very good honor, something we're very proud of. Uh, low truancy rate, our kids come to school. Uh, we have a high graduation rate, high attendance rate, except for this week. Flu's been a, I was going to say flu's been a bugger, but uh, flu's been tough on us. Uh, student, uh, our pupil to student ratio. We are at 21 to 1, the state's at 19 to 1. Uh, 21 is manageable, uh, but I'll talk about this a little bit later on. That's not the norm in every class. There's quite a few classes that are up, to, up here third. Over 70% of our teachers have master's degree. I personally think this is a very positive. Our teachers are experts in the fields. They do a very good job. Um, they are a big reason why we're exempted. A couple financial things. We receive financial recognition. This is when our auditors come in and do our audit. Uh, you get a financial rec or a financial profile rating. Two years ago, we were at Watch, which was, was the lowest rating. Uh, we went from Watch to recognition in one year, and we've stayed at recognition the last few years. So that is something that I'm uh, very happy with. I know the board's happy with. Something we're still uh, want to try to keep. Several years ago, when the state did the evidence-based funding, uh, they developed a term called adequacy tar target, and that is what the state says you should be getting in, in terms of money in order to be a highly qualified school. We are $2.2 million below that. Our, our budget's about $6 million, so what they're saying is we should be close to $8 million uh, as far as the state goes. So our accuracy number is about 71%. Uh, so we're doing a lot of good things with not quite what the money the state says they, that we should have in the state. They're trying to catch up, but I don't know if they ever will. And the other thing that I'm really happy about, and it's been a big effort on my part and the board's part, is that we've made uh, over $1.5 million in improvements to the facility um, in the last three or four years. And those are things that uh, needed to be upgraded. Started off, we had some sidewalks, so we went around the building, got a grant, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago, something that Mr. Lehman started. Uh, we finished that up, so we have all uh, newer, upgraded uh, concrete around the school. We had a lot of cracking, tripping issues. Uh, we replaced the old boiler that was in the gym. Uh, that was about 20 to 25 years old. Put a brand new HVA system in. If you've been in it, we, I don't know if you remember going to graduation. We had to turn it off because it was so loud. We can run it now. It, it works out really well. Started an asbestos abatement program about three years ago. Uh, have gone through and have identified where all the asbestos is in the building. The plan is to have it all remediated or abated by the year 2022. The only thing we have left now is, is uh, floor tile in the central hall, the, the, the addition that they put in the seven. So we've got part of that scheduled for this summer, the rest of it scheduled for next summer. After that, we should be asbestos free in the building. Uh, that 1996 addition, over the last two years, we replaced all the original carpeting. So that carpeting was 20 some odd years old. Uh, really improved that area. We've upgraded all the interior door locks. Uh, before we upgraded, we had about eight master keys for different door locks in the building. Uh, nobody knew which key went to what door. We went through, replaced them all. We have a master key. Now teachers, for security reasons, if they're subbing in this classroom, but their classrooms in the south end, they can lock that door now before they couldn't lock the door. So those are all upgraded. Uh, we built this parking lot, which you can't see right now, which we are planning on trying to put some ice out there. But we put this uh, staff parking lot up here. Uh, it actually opened up 35 extra parking spots for the kids right up front. So that was an area that we needed was more parking for students. As mentioned earlier, we upgraded the old bus garage. It was, we were able to add two classrooms and a three-bay shop. Both classrooms are in use now. The Ag uses one and one of our resource classes uses the other right now. There's gonna be an open house to put a plug in for that next Tuesday, maybe the 25th. So if you, be, if you can make it next Tuesday, 25th, come in and see what it looks like, especially if you're ever in the old bus garage. Uh, it's got some amazing uh, solid uh, cedar 
plank roofing ceiling that we left exposed is really neat. And then uh, we are planning, uh, this is something we've been working on, uh, some building permits and the weather has slowed us down, but we're going to have a new construction class next year. Mr. Kanaki, one of our shop teachers in the back, he's going to teach that. And those students are going to be able to help construct this. So this is going to be a 60 by 40 storage building out at the athletic complex that will be able to store a lot of the equipment that we have out there. A lot of that equipment was purchased through the MABC. Now we can keep that inside and help protect that equipment. All these projects, again, 1.5 million, I'm happy to say we were able to have these all done within our existing budget. We did not have to go out and ask the taxpayers for any more money. We were able to keep that, uh, the funds that we currently have and use those. So here's where we start talking about some of our issues. We're going to have a little bit of growth. The next 10 to 12 years, we have a steady growth. We're not going to get tons of kids, but we have a steady growth from the grade schools. Currently, we're about 660 students. This is all numbers that we have directly from the grade school. Um, the average over the next 10 or 12 years is only going to be about 20 more students. But this is going to fluctuate up and down over the years because we have some big classes. Like right now, our freshman class is very large, but our junior class is small. So as that moves through, that, that uh, enrollment fluctuates, but we'll have over 700 kids in just a short amount of time. Uh, I estimated, I know I talked to, to Mr. Sawzik a little bit, if you look on the state's uh, website, we're at about uh, average of 23 students a class, 22 class, depending on where you get your numbers from. So anywhere from 15, every 15 to 20 kids, you have to think about, we probably are going to need another class. A lot of our classes are uh, large. So I wrote down a couple numbers here. All of our English 1 classes. A third of the classes are either 20, between 28 and 30 students, average about 22 in English 1. Algebra 1, average about 24. Half of those classes are either 29 or 30 students in a class. Bio 1, which is a lab, understand it's a lab, a quarter of those uh, classes are bigger than 26 or bigger. Uh, and then Spanish 1, 100% of those classes are either 27, 28, or 29. So we, you know, we have pockets of very, very large classes, and it makes it difficult, and it's just not effective to have that large of a class. So those are things that we've looked at. The administration is looking at, uh, along with the counselors, we're going to present that to the board probably in March, if we need to add a staff member in this department or that department to, to help out with the overcrowding. Uh, I will mention this a little bit later, but there's not a place to put that new staff member, but uh, if we need to... Uh, do a little finagling, we can try to work some things in. So the million dollar questions, and that's not a pun to anybody that was talking about their taxes a second ago, but, you know, how many classes do we need? Whoops, there's more questions there, isn't there? I guess there's not, there's another one that has more questions. So what does this translate into classrooms? It's hard to say. Um, it could be anywhere from one to three classrooms from the kids that are right now coming through the grade schools. Um, can we accommodate those kids? Well, we probably could. It's going to be higher class numbers. We're going to have to find other places to put the classes. Uh, last year we built a, another room into the library so that we can adjust some classes. The big issue is, and kind of one of the unknowns as far as student population, is what's going on in the community. So right now there's four different subdivisions. And if you've driven around and paid attention, You'll, you'll be aware of these. Hunters Point is on Press Road. It's right by Smith the Great School. If you drive by, it looks like a field. Uh, the last I heard from Smithton that it's still alive, uh, but they're not building anything yet. So how many kids will we get from there? We don't know. Metal Pines. Metal Pines is off of Wolf Road. I believe there's two homes occupied now, and one's a spec home. But it's approved for 30 homes. The road's in. The homes are being built. Uh, or two of three of the homes are, are being built. But it's plans for up to 96, and they're the ones that have their signs everywhere. If you come up by uh, uh, Tractor Supply, they're there. They're up on uh, 159. Edison Estates, this has been in the paper quite a bit lately. This is behind Tequilas. Um, they are looking at 16 villas, and the villas are like 1,600 square feet. So they're going to be good-sized villas, so families could be in there and 14 homes. My information from 
the city is that they expect the construction to begin sometime this spring, and we could have kids in there or, or families moving in by next January. And then Sunset Ridge, um, this, I just received a notice from the city of Belleville. They are extending that subdivision, so it would be to the, what would that be, east? So if you pull in on the right, there's, our, there's actually already fire hydrants in that field that they built it to add on. So that's expected to have 26 homes in that subdivision. So, you know, you can do the math, uh, add up everything. The question is, I mean, how many new homes are we really going to get? We don't know. Those that have been around a while, maybe remember the Schleter. Schleter was talking about building 500 homes off of 159 and then I don't know all the legalities, they ran into issues and it, it didn't happen. So these are actual subdivisions. They're, you know, some of them have already started. We just don't know how many students we're gonna get. Uh, you know, how long do you wait? On the average, it takes anywhere from 18 months to about 24 months from the time you start planning, and kind of where we're at as a board, to the time you could expect students to actually use the facility. So it takes a little bit, and that's something that we talked about a little bit with the board. So some interesting numbers from the student population. So back in the mid-2000s, there were well over 750 kids in this building. Okay? And I just told you a second ago we got 660. So it's fluctuated up and down. We were down near almost 600 uh, back in the early, early 2010s. I'm not sure if that's the right term. Um, when we had that many teachers, several teachers didn't have a room. So they had to have carts. So they literally put all their things on carts and they traveled from room to room while the other teachers were in their conference. And if we had to, we could do that. But imagine that is, that's basically, if you worked in business, you have to switch offices with somebody six times during the day. So it's just, it's not convenient. It's not, it doesn't work well. Um, it's a short-term solution, but it's not a long-term solution. Since this time, we've added two resource classes. So these are classes now that occupy a room that did not occupy a room. <coughs> We've also have two classrooms that, that Bass is renting from us. So down at the north end, there's two classrooms that Bass use. And then we've also increased our ag program to full time, which they shared a classroom previously. When we went to full time, obviously they had to have their own room. So if you do, again, a little bit of math, we added five classrooms, we, uh, I'm sorry, we occupied five more classrooms than we did back then, we added two classrooms. We really have three classrooms less than we had to use back in the uh, mid-2000s. And that's about 70 kids are, that we've lost as far as being able to put the kids in the building. So we're pretty close on our numbers. So here's our current facility needs. And if it was just based on classrooms, I think there'd be a hard argument to say we have to, you know, we have to add classrooms, we have to add classrooms, because we can, for a little bit, we, we can kind of uh, live with that. So classrooms is a big deal. You know, we, we want to make sure teachers have classrooms, we want to make them effective. Another area we have is our cafeteria, where you're sitting in now. This is a picture I took the other day of a cafeteria. Uh, there are not many empty seats in the cafeteria. There's one here, one there. So this is an area as we grow that we're going to need more room. So we can add tables. Um, it, it gets pretty crowded in here, uh, but that's an area that we need. And the other area is expansion of our industrial arts facility. One of the big pushes that we've had in the recent uh, last couple of years is to really concentrate on our industrial arts. Um, we have Three fantastic teachers down there. Uh, in the recent months, we had a, a CNC machine donated by PAC. Just today, the auto shop teacher was installing a new drive-up car lift that was donated by Lewis and Clark College. Uh, they're doing amazing things. The, this class and some of the curriculum changes that we've made in the industrial arts is we're now trying to gear these students to go directly into either the work field or into trade schools. Uh, there, there's more of a focus on a skill uh, as opposed to just concentrating on the four-year college route for these students. They're busting at the seams. I've got a picture here. This is a, one of the angles in the uh, shop class. Those are welders. 
past the cords where the welders are hanging down, there's, I don't know, there's about eight different milling machines on the wall. There's about four or five. If you look really close in the corner, you can see the new CNC machine. To the right is a foundry that SWIC actually uses at night, teaches the foundry class here. There, it, there's not much room. Matt's done a great job. I'd love to take you on a tour. Matt's done a great job of reorganizing that room. Uh, and Mr. Garrett's done a, a great job in the automotive. But these are areas that we really need to focus on. And uh, again, the, the combination of these three, I think, justifies kind of the direction uh, that I've been talking to the board about. So we've talked quite a bit about, it's not been a secret, I, I talked to uh, this is Carpenter earlier. You know, we've met, we've been talking about this at board meetings the last since September, October, probably longer. So the second floor classroom, and I mentioned that second, uh, uh, the 1996 edition. I'll have a picture of it here shortly. But it, what it does is it takes three areas of need, those three areas that we just talked about, and it actually is one solution. If we add those classrooms, it solves those problems. Uh, the next page has the map, but we could add up to 14 classrooms. We don't know how the configuration would be. Um, estimated with new students, again, I'm guessing, because I just don't know, four to six classrooms. This one I do know that we need to expand the seat in the cafeteria and expand room for the art, uh, industrial arts class. So the idea of expanding the cafeteria, those are two classrooms that we use right now. We could take those classrooms down and expand into those two rooms. So those would be the easiest way to expand the cafeteria. The industrial arts, there are uh, five classrooms, six classrooms. I'll show you the picture. But if we took them out of the north wing, moved them to the new second floor, we could expand the north wing for the industrial arts. Uh, the other thing that's been brought up at board meetings, and, and I do think it would be really nice, uh, it would be good for us. I think we have a population of kids that would really like it as a JROTC. Uh, we talked about that. I think the board is ready to move on. The big issue was they're going to require a couple classrooms. If we don't have the classrooms, we're not going to get the program. So we would have to be able to have classrooms for that. Depending on how we configure the North End, we could have all 14 classrooms used in the next five to ten years. I don't know. A lot of it has to do with that first one, what the growth is from the subdivision. So here's a map of the current school. The blue area is the South, the 1996 edition South End. That's 14 classrooms on the bottom. Again, I don't know how we would configure the second floor. It is built to go up. One of the big selling points for those that were around in 96 was that the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up. It's cheaper to go up than it is to go out. So we're gonna save all kinds of money because we don't have to do any groundwork. So we could configure those classrooms. It has the stairwells, it has the elevator shaft already designed. All the classrooms in pink could then be moved into the second floor. So the two classrooms in the cafeteria, these are these two classrooms here, depending on if we have room, N16 is actually the concession stand. It'd be really nice to not have to have a classroom. Not that you know, we have to ask the teacher if they like popcorn, if they like to smell popcorn. That's not really true, but. So that's another classroom we can move over. And then these, it's actually four classrooms. There's a bass classroom, and then two bass classrooms, and then the art room it actually has two classrooms. Back in the day, those were math classrooms. So those could all be moved to the second floor. Then that big bolded area could then all be reconfigured for industrial arts. So we could, you know, we could flip-flop where automotive comes in, again, I don't know how we're going to do it. That's why we have to hire architects and engineers. But that gives us room for those three different areas. Uh, gives us the extra classroom, gives us the seating in the cafeteria, and also gives us room to expand the industrial arts. So then there's other things that, uh, that are probably needs that we have uh, for the, for the uh, facility. The one is in a closed corridor to the Ag Center. So when we built that, we talked about, you know, how do you get the kids back and forth right now? Kids actually get one of these little cards that's programmed that they can open the doors just during the school day because the doors are all locked down during the school day. If we had a corridor, they could pass back and forth. They'd be out of the weather. So that's, that's an area that we think we really need to uh, look at. 
a performing arts center, uh, and then probably a band and chorus rooms. Uh, some of the numbers for that. Uh, if you haven't been anywhere to see our band, please make an effort to go see your band. Our last basketball game is Friday night. I know they'll be there. It's just, it's fantastic. Mr. Goss is doing a great job. But he's telling me that we're at about 60 or so. Is that right, kids? And we're anticipating maybe 90 next year, and then maybe 100 shortly after. And so those board members that are here, I'll probably be coming to you shortly about <laughs> some uniforms and some costs. So uh, that's exploded at the scene. Uh, it's an area we need to look at. The other one is it's a, a new competitive gym. And I'll talk about all these in, in more detail when we get to them. So the closed corridor. Please, this is not what I anticipated a closed corridor would be. Uh, but it's the only picture I could find. But basically, just some closed corridor. It would go from the south end, uh, west hallway, kind of make a little L shape. I've got a, a, a really basic picture of it. Again, it would address some of the security needs. Uh, one thing is this corridor could be put on if we would go out and try to bid out the second floor. It could be put on as a alternate. So basically the bids on the second floor came in cheap enough, we could possibly then build the corridor. We don't know, we have to wait for bids come in to see if that'll work out. So performing arts center. These things are wonderful. Um, right now we use the secondary gym for all of our plays. Um, we, we use it for practice. I would, it's just in there earlier. Softball's using it uh, for some preseason stuff. We could also use this for band concerts, the class meetings that we have, parent meetings, community meetings. Um, there, there are just a hundred different things you could use that for. Uh, the secondary gym would stay. We're not talking about tearing anything down. We need to keep the space that we have. But if you go to any of the top schools in the area, if you go to the Evansvilles and the O'Fallons and the East and the West, one of the things they have is a performing arts center. Uh, if we want to call ourselves, be in that uh, level of a school. A new competitive gym. So a couple things with the gym. Our current gym was built in 1951, so if you do the math, we're, we're approaching 70 years. Uh, it is not ADA compliant. We do get around that. We, you know, people that are in wheelchairs, we have spaces for them, but we don't have enough spaces that we need. Um, we cannot hold an IHSA volleyball regional or sectional. IHSA won't let us have it anymore. Our roof's too short. Um, I forget what it is. It has to be 19 feet, or it has to be 20 feet, and ours is 19 feet or something. It's just, it, we just can't have it, so we have to travel. We can host games but we can't have uh, the sectionals of things. Uh, and I talked to Coach Lauren, who wanted to point this out. This is kind of a typical day in the winter. We have three different levels of boys basketball to find room for. We've got three for girls. Our cheerleaders want room. The dance team wants room. The color guard wants room. I will tell you that picture is of Carterville High School, where unfortunately our girls just lost last night in the sectional. Uh, they actually were able to build their school from the 1% sales tax, which I'm not getting into, but that's another thing we need to get going in St. Clair County. This would include new locker rooms, weight rooms, athletic offices. One of the big issues that we have with our gym is the gym is a, a great venue to come in and watch a game. If you, you know, if you come Friday night and watch the game, we'll have 100 kids there. They'll be screaming and yelling. I'll probably be standing right next to them. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a great gym. You're right on top of the court. It's a great atmosphere. But for practices, there's only one court, whether it's volleyball or basketball. Now, volleyball, they were able to put in some uh, uh, supports to move the courts. It's just not conducive to, for practices. So there are some financial options that we have. So we can use existing fund balances. So we can take what we now have in the bank and we can use that money. There's things called a working cash bond sale, <coughs> debt certificates, referendums, and then uh, that needs to probably say school maintenance grant, not state matching because it's a little different than that. But there is a grant that's, that the state is talking about, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So our existing funds, we've done a pretty good job, I think, uh, watching our money, uh, looking at the budget, uh, we've done some things uh, financially within the school to save quite a bit of money. 
has increased our fund balances, but we have had to pay for about 15 or $1.5 million of upgrades. So that is dipped into our fund balances. We are limited. I mean, we have some money that we could cover some of these costs, but we don't have anywhere enough money to cover a $3 million uh, second floor addition or a $8 million gym or whatever it is. We don't have that kind of money in our funds. We have future maintenance needs. We're going to have HVAC issues we're going to have to replace. We're going to have roofs we're going to have to deal with. The building envelope, we've got some duck, tuck pointing that we have to work on. Uh, we need to work on our parking lots. Um, just general paint, uh, ceiling tile. That's one of my big bugaboos is hate seeing the ceiling tiles that don't look nice. But it costs money. We've got to figure that all in. So the district's limited on what funds they can use as well. So we can't just take money out of any funds. So we can use what's called the Operation and Maintenance Fund. We can use what's called the Working Cash Fund, which is our internal bank. If you pass a rent referendum, that money goes in what's called capital improvements, and then you, you pay for it out of capital improvements. So this is kind of the Working Cash Bond sale. Right now, we have the ability to sell 3.5 to 3.7. It'll all depend on what the market is on the particular date they send and sell the bonds. Uh, if we combine those with the 2011 bond, which are the ones that we use uh, to do the office and the athletic complex, basically we can refinance that, and that will not increase our tax rate. So our tax rate will be the same. So you would not have to pay any more. We, I we correct that because the multiplier is going to come out. I have no control over that. But your tax rate will not increase. It will extend the repayment about 10 years. It is the quickest way for us to get money. We can get it about two to three months. There's a couple of stipulations. One, you have to spend 5% of it in the first six months, and then 85% of it in the next three years. So the state doesn't allow you just to sell these bonds and sit on this money, or sell the bonds and throw the money in the bank and collect interest. You, you have to sell them for a reason. And so the only reason that the board would sell them would be for construction. Debt certificates are like going to the bank and taking a loan, except schools are not allowed to go to banks and take loans. Uh, we could sell, with our current situation, $2 million in debt certificates. So we could go and sell these things and get two, million, two extra million dollars over and above the three seven. The stipulation is these have to be guaranteed be, uh, uh, with an annual revenue source. And the really only annual revenue source we have is what's called the working cash levy. We get about $150,000, $145,000 a year that comes into our internal bank that we can use for whatever we see fit. But if we commit that money, that means for 10 years we don't, we don't have an internal bank. So we've just lost $145,000 in revenue. So it's not the most attractive. You know, if, if worse comes to worse, we can do this, but I would not recommend to the board that we eliminate uh, $145,000 of revenue each year. Referendum, everybody's heard this. So we can place a referendum on a ballot, sell bonds, raise the money, whatever it is, to pay for the project. You have, you have to put it up for a vote. Earliest could be November, the latest could be whenever we decide to put it on, if we ever do. You have to have a majority uh, pass it. It will undoubtedly increase the tax rate. And then amount depends on the referendum. So I have some options and I'll explain all these different amounts depending on the options. And those are basically 15 to 20 years repayment. So there, the last one is the state construction grant. So that's the, uh, the governor's been talking about that. Uh, one of our local superintendents is on the committee. What my understanding is, we're going to hear something in March, how this is going to work. Um, we anticipate that these will be made first to the Tier 1 schools, and unfortunately we're a Tier 2 school. So what that means is, our graduation rate's too high, and our kids come to school, and we do good on tests, and, you know, so, um, which is all great. The chances of us getting this money, don't know. I will tell you that we are on the old list for that money, which is 2005. So we are still on that list. So there is some conversation, maybe they'll take those schools first. I'm just not crossing my fingers. 
But if that money is available, obviously we would we would try to get some of that money. So here are our options. I have six options that I put together. They all differ by the scope, so what's involved, the estimates. I will tell you that the estimates are based on what projects cost around here recently. So the architect gave me some ideas, kind of ranges of what they would be. I went high on the ranges, so that uh, you're shocked now and wouldn't be shocked later. So the first one, we could just build nothing. So we don't we don't have to build anything. You know, it, it doesn't it won't cost the taxpayers anything. Helps out with the repayment schedule. It won't be an extension. But it doesn't address any of these needs that we've just talked about. The alternative is, well, we would probably have to increase our class sizes. We're probably not going to be able to have the offerings that we want in our industrial arts. And if we have to, we may have to move some trailers in. And it, it's, just, it's just not a, a very pleasant option, in my opinion. Second option is to build the, the second floor. Preliminary numbers, again, these are high. It's somewhere between $3.5 and $4.5 million. We don't know. You know. We won't know until they actually come out to bid, whenever that is. But uh, that's kind of the estimate right now. It does address the three most glaring needs that we have. It'll able, enable us to uh, absorb any kind of increase we're going to get either from the grade school or from the local community from the new houses. We'll be able to expand the cafeteria, uh, move those classes, and we'll have room to move classes out of the industrial arts and expand industrial arts. It can't be paid for. We think, we're guessing that we'll get enough in working cash that we can pay for all of it. So we're thinking that there would be no cost to the taxpayers or no additional cost to the taxpayers. Right now, it doesn't matter what home you have. And then like I said earlier, we would, if we did this, we would put the bid out for the second floor of the corridor and then what, whenever they come back, if we have enough to cover the corridor, we'll put the corridor in. But that's the first option. We'll hear more about that in a minute. So I will tell you, this is the rendering. I, there was a picture of Mr. Lehman's office I can vividly remember, and I went and looked for it. I couldn't find it. So the architect had this. I wanted to take a picture of what we have now, uh, even though it's from my camera. It has the stucco. I think it's a little more attractive than the one on the left. Maybe looks more like a shed than a building, but we would, you know, we would make it look similar to what's on the bottom. So that's the second floor on the south end. Third option is we build the second floor and the corridor. So this is if we didn't have enough money. Uh, the architect said anywhere from about a half a million to a million. Again, they're going high. Uh, I don't know how many feet this corridor is, but that seems like a lot of money to me. Uh, it would be enclosed, addresses the safety. Hopefully we can cover it in the working cash. Um, if we couldn't and the board decided to go out, then we would have to uh, pass a referendum. It would add a nickel to the tax rate. And it works out to be, generally speaking, about $16 a year per $100,000 uh, value of your home. So you can kind of figure that out. Um, you know, if you're in a $100,000 home or, or $500,000 home, you can kind of figure that out. <coughs> the least expensive, it still would involve having to go out and pass a referendum. Again, third time now, bids come in low enough that this should cover that. So this was my attempt on Google Earth. So the corridor would just extend, turn in to the back of the uh, Ag Center. Uh, that's where the, the main entrance is right now. We would have the door locks like we have now, and the cameras, and uh, the whole bed like we have now. Fourth option, we would build second floor, corridor, and a performing arts center. Total, this is total for all three, would be about $10 million. Again, it adds a performing arts to those other options. We would also put bank course into there, so they would have rooms and practice areas for that. Uh, it does address the performing arts, the lack of it. We will need a referendum. It will raise a tax rate about 13 cents works out to be about, again, the estimate of the cost is an estimate. Those numbers are based on the 10 million. So it would be right at about $27 per $100,000 value of your home. So you can kind of play with those numbers. 
Option five would build the second floor corridor, but then a gym, not the corner. Again, new gym, weight room, locker room, uh, all the different things that we talked about from the gym. Again, we would have to have, pass a referendum to <coughs> raise the tax rate about 18 cents. And again, you can see what this is. I, you know, to be completely uh, honest, this is forty-four dollars more than what you're paying now. So I don't want you to think your tax is forty-four dollars. So this is forty-four dollars for every hundred thousand your home is worth. And then option six is the second floor corridor, the whole kit and caboodle, performing arts, and a new gym. So this addresses pretty much all the needs that we've talked about as far as new facilities. It would have to be a referendum. It would cost us almost 29 cents on your tax rate. And so it's right at $100 uh, more a year in taxes uh, per $100,000 of your home. So it, it costs money to have those things. So what we're planning on is building the most symmetrical square with rounded edges as we can and try to fit it all in there. Uh, I had no idea how this would work out. I, another version, I had different plate, uh, you know, the gym put in one spot, the performing arts, and then people wanted to say, well, you should want to put it here. So it would be put in the west athletic field is probably where it would end up going if this is the route uh, that we would go. So just kind of an overview of the different options and what the actual taxes would be. Now, these are just your high school taxes. This doesn't include the grade schools, it doesn't include the fire department, it doesn't include the library, and whatever else we get taxed. So you can kind of see right now, uh, on a $100,000 home, our taxes are somewhere around $800. Uh, go to the right, it's about $100 more. Uh, so that's kind of an idea, just the real numbers of what it would cost uh, for each of the options. So we do have some action plan for tomorrow night at the board meeting. <coughs> On our agenda, we have the first step to take to initiate the working cash bonds thing. So we're doing this for a couple reasons. One, uh, we're able to raise a 3.5 to 3.7. It'll take about three months to do this. Combined with the 2011 bonds, again, it should not raise tax rates. Uh, the one thing that I put in here, I really haven't discussed it with the board, I think we have a direction, but this doesn't commit us to any one plan. I think there's a plan, but it doesn't mean there's, there's options there, like the difference between the north end, I'm sorry, the second floor and the uh, hallway. So it could include both, it could include one. But by taking action now, we're able to take advantage of historically low uh, interest rates. So that's part of the reason why we're able to do this and not have to increase any kind of tax rate. Uh, we could wait, but again, uh, it takes 18 to 24 months to get kids into a building. Uh, the longer we wait, the longer we, it takes to get these things done. <coughs> what it does do, it provides us funds for planning and design. As you notice, all I have is a big white blob. I don't have work different things are going to go. I don't know which classrooms are going to go where in the north end. I don't know when we're going to take these walls out. So that'll take planning. It'll take designing. We'll have to have engineers come in. That all takes money. This puts the best, the district in the best position where we can start construction in May of 21. So that's about the earliest that we could expect. The reason we have to wait that long is the second floor, the seismic requirements have changed. So we have to go into the first floor walls open walls up and beef up the X structure that's in the walls. And then there's some work we have to do in the stairwells, but that has to be done in the summer. While they're doing that, they can also do work on the top that creates the most noise. Uh, and it gives us the ability then to, do, to, to accomplish those things without having classes in there. We couldn't go in, we, we have no way to relocate 14 classrooms to do that work. So it has to wait for the summer. There's no way we'd want to rush it for this summer because we're just not prepared for it. So the earliest we could do it would be May of 21. So what we want, and the reason for this uh, uh, presentation tonight, is we would like to hear from the uh, community to see what their wants are. 
So we are going to put a link on our Facebook page. Uh, Mr. All is going to be, uh, we have a survey. The teachers took it the other day. This will be a brand new survey just for the community. Uh, there is a way to set it up so it kind of differenti differentiates uh, whether you're in the district or outside the district. Uh, that survey results then will be open until March 4th. I'll try to get a little bit of time. And then I'll share those with the board. And then the board has the option then of taking what input, input you give them to help them make the best, best decisions for the kids. So uh, a lot of information. I appreciate you guys coming tonight. If you do have questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Yes. So you said on the working cash bond yeah. that it would have uh, instead of repayment by 10 years, yes. what's the current repayment or what was done in 2009? I think we're at 29, 2029. I think is when they'll be repaid. So it'll extend that 10 years past. 27, I think it's 27. I should have had that. How much was those bonds? Uh, $3 million. No, no, five. I think it was three million. <coughs> five. Somewhere between three and five. So those were have been paid off in 27. Yes. You're going to get it incorporated into this new one at a lower interest rate. Right? Sure. Right. Five percent. Absolutely. Yeah. About the 37. For option two, that's option two. To build the second floor. Kind of option. Uh, <laughs> option three, yes. It was also with working cash working bonds, working cash bonds. But it was more, it would have cost taxpayers a little bit. Depending on what the bids come in, if the bids come in low enough, we do have some <coughs> funds available. If we can't cover it by the working cash bond sale. But the working cash bond sale for either two or three does not require a book of the public. Correct. With the extra 14, everybody my hand? No. <laughs> extra 14 classrooms, we talked about it. In Enlarging the program, industrial arts program. Is there any other extra programs that could be added? Or? Well, the JRTC is one True. that we're looking at. Yep. Uh, is it just giving us more classrooms to not have as many kids in each math class or English well, class or Spanish class or whatever? Right, but the problem with adding kids is you have to also have to add staff. So we would, you know, we're going to have to make sure that we can balance the, the cost of the staff with the uh, class size. But it gives us, you know, we get half of these homes built that are coming in, and all of a sudden now we've got another 100 kids coming in. We're probably going to need to add, you know, use up more classrooms. There may be a chance where we don't use every classroom. Uh, we're always looking at, at new programs. I know uh, this past year we made adjustments in the curriculum to the industrial arts. We uh, added a couple new uh, programs to the band. They're doing jazz this year. Um, our business has had adjustments, the social studies have had adjustments, math. So, so we've kind of gone through the curriculum the last couple of years and, and made adjustments to the curriculum. If there is something new, and then we're always open if it's going to benefit our kids and we can make it easier. So adding classroom would need adding more teachers and electricity and all that talked about what kind of additional operational costs 14 classrooms will No, No, uh, I don't know as far as electricity. I will tell you that each teacher we add adds about fifty five to sixty thousand dollars. When you're talking about salary benefits for a teacher. But we're not in fourteen teachers no. some of those classrooms we take in for us. So so if we add ten well we I I estimate four to six. Six to seven of those classrooms are just relocation. So you're looking at you know, 200 to 300,000. Well, we had more ag or more industrial arts teachers with more 
program? The plan is not right now, no, just to expand it to give them more room so they can spread things out. Gotcha. You know, the next thing that might be on the horizon, we may be looking at expanding like our egg. Because we went from half time to full time, and, and our full time, I mean, our egg classes are pretty full. And there are other programs in egg that we could have. On the second floor? Yeah. There's seven. There's seven? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, you, if I go to that picture, I have to look at it. Yeah, that's fine. Can we that's keep cool. in the bath classrooms? I mean, we're not. Uh, we still keep those? Yes. Because that's income. That's income. And, and, and actually, they've asked to increase it by class. So they, they would not go on the second floor. I know I put it in the picture. But we have other classes that are probably then relocated because they have to be on the first floor because they have. Yeah. Yes, true. They, they have. Uh, so these, these are severely uh, handicapped students. They're, most of them are nonverbal, they're wheelchairs. And so ASK rents the classrooms or rents the rooms from us. So it's a, it's a revenue generator. And so they, they're almost every student is in a wheelchair. So we've kind of worked through where they're going to go as well. So right now, you were saying that thing is built up there, you have seven classrooms filled. What is your prediction on having all 14 filled? What year? Well, it, I don't know. But the problem is I don't know how many houses are going to get built and how soon they're going to get built. So as soon as the houses get built, you, know, you look at the statistics and it says, you know, 0.3 kids per house or whatever. So a lot of it has to do with, with when they're going to get built. So well, I'm asking a question because yeah. we could be sitting back here in four years and we're out of room. It could be. Yeah, it could be. I mean, if they, like, Schleter built 500 homes, we had well, we to build a new school. Yes, I understand. What is that? Well, it costs a lot. <laughs> 40 million. That's what water would cost. 40 million. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, 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 we don't have any control over that. It's just I, the, the kids I, are there, I we have you, to figure out. I heard out. you make a comment on all of it, and I know the numbers. And the thing is, we have teachers, that, the teacher only works six hours, six, six hours out of seven hours. And each one of them in a room, so that room sits the company one hour a day. No students are in that room. No students are in that room. And in today's technology, and I heard you say they would have to push a cart in another room that somebody would have to go in on your personal desk. You know, but that would be that is still an option. Sure, if we didn't have those other two issues right. with not having enough room here and needing to expand special arts. So I mean it's it's not one thing, it's it's multiple things. Well I understand. Yeah. Well, I would say to that, that you can't do that with every class. You can't move a science class, it's allowed. You can't move certain classes. It, it, it doesn't work for every class. It, it honestly is the least, I'd rather have four trailers out here and have people have their own classroom than I would rather have a teacher on a cart going back and forth. They actually work during their conference period. Um, it's hard to get everything that you want into a classroom and teach a lesson. It's just, it's just not ideal at all. Could, it, could we do it? Yeah, and we did do it. And then our enrollment started going down and we were able to, you know, survive. But uh, our, our enrollment's not going down. I don't think it's gonna go down. The numbers from the grade school is definitely not going down. We're gonna have 20 more kids uh, on the average. That's just numbers that are in the grade school now. So you, know, you get a few houses built, you get another five kids here, another 10 kids, 20 kids. We have to have room. Plus, it takes two years to build these to build the classrooms. So, yeah, it's, that's that's a legitimate question. Is there a goal the board talked about on student teacher ratio? Did you 
we would get to, people said that the Spanish was pretty high, that you know, if we had extra classroom, try to bring that down, but we had a chance to do it. Florida, was there a certain goal we want to get to? Um, we have State was 19 to 1. Right, we haven't talked about a specific goal. Typically what we do administratively is we look and see where we think the needs are. We come to the board, talk to the board, we think we need, last year we added a full-time math and a half-time English. Last year, last year we did that. And that was to help out with the numbers, which, which it did, because there was a lot more classes that had big numbers. We also expanded our uh, academic lab, which is a guided study hall for students that are struggling to give them uh, extra help. We have an aid in there. Again, that's another program that we have in the library. So we're going to put the presentation, Jeff uh, recorded the presentation, that'll go on the website along with the link to the uh, survey. It should be all up by tomorrow morning, early, uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, but I appreciate you guys coming in, I appreciate the questions. And uh, if you have other questions, I can wait and talk to you, you can give me a call. But I appreciate it, thank you, you for coming tonight and, and spending your time here. And uh, We can do it again tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, I'll be here with board members so if you want to come to that. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Looks like that should be all.